Good morning, and thank you for joining us for this week's Stories of Music. In past videos, you might recall we talked about how condition can affect the value of a record. Now, the thing to remember about condition and value is condition is just really another word for supply. The reason a record that is in better condition is more valuable is because, obviously, there are fewer of them compared to all available of that particular kind of record. And in fact, a record does not need to be in particularly good condition in order to be rare and therefore valuable. Recently, we sent a jazz record from the 60s down to a very happy customer down in the States. It was fairly rare and therefore very valuable, but what it wasn't is in particularly fantastic condition. It was not a very good plus or near mint by any stretch of the imagination, but it was still valuable because it was rare. Which brings us to this week's question. Why is it that albums from the late 80s are so expensive? A friend of mine recently sent me a Facebook post from a friend of hers in Sparwood looking for a record from 1988. It happened to be Tracy Chapman's debut record, simply called Tracy Chapman. And uh, this friend was expecting, if you read the post, to spend about $25 on this record. Well, when I looked it up and did some research, I found that actually she was a little off. For that record, you probably need to spend at least $45, if not more. One of them that was in very good condition that I could have picked up would have cost me over $50 by the time I shipped it. And then, of course, I have to sell it in the store for a little bit of a markup. So what's going on? Well, I did some research, and I found an article online from the LA Times from 1988 talking about the sales of records. It said that in 1973 in the US, there were 280 million vinyl LPs sold. By 1987, the year before the article was written, this had dropped to 107 million LPs. Now, some of this can be explained with the advent of CDs that came out in 1983. By 1986, they were outselling vinyl every year, something that they did until just recently. In another article that I found, it stated that by 1993, so now this is 20 years later after the original numbers, the number of LPs produced, sold, in the States had dropped to an amazing number, only 300,000. So what's going on? Well, obviously you had the influence of cassettes and the aforementioned CDs, much fewer LPs were being produced and sold, and therefore their rarity is producing this increased value. Now, in recent years, vinyl, of course, has enjoyed a comeback, but even today, the numbers being sold are pretty small. In 2019, there were only 18 million records sold in the U.S., this is obviously over a much larger population and many more artists putting out vinyl. Nowadays, the influence isn't CDs so much as it is on, uh, uh, online downloads, which contribute to the vast majority of the music, physical music at least, being produced. Now, even those numbers have been starting to drop in recent years. I found an article that showed that in 2018, revenue from digital downloads was about $550 million, and it dropped about $100 million in the next two years, uh, over the next two years, excuse me, down to $350 million in 2020. So obviously, even the trend 
in downloaded music is going down. Now, what also uh, complicates the issue nowadays is, of course, people buying vinyl not just of newly produced music, but also music from the past, new pressings of old titles. Now, how this is going to affect the rarity and therefore the collectability and the value of these records in the future, only time will tell. Thanks for joining us for this week's Stories of Music. Hope you got some information out of that. Please keep collecting those records. We always like to see you. We'll see you next week for more Stories of Music. Bye for now.